Yes, I don't think a lot of people really know his history. Once you visit the General Tommy Franks Leadership Institute and Museum along Main Street in Hobart, you'll get a clearer picture of the impact General Tommy Franks had on U.S. history. It is very important to highlight his career. Born in Winniewood, Oklahoma, the museum begins with General Franks' humble beginnings in Oklahoma through boot camp, then moves on to chronicle his 38-year military career. Successfully ousted the French and was prepared to fight a protracted guerrilla war against the South and its American allies. The interactive exhibits showcase military equipment and rare artifacts from Frank's time in Vietnam to when he was assigned Commander-in-Chief at Central Command as a four-star general. And I hope this exhibit, Never Forget, will pay tribute to the lives lost on 9-11. Shortly after his assignment, the 9-11 terrorist attacks occurred, as told through this new permanent exhibit. It takes you through an entire day, the entire day of 9-11 with videos and artifacts and tells the story of exactly what happened and then our reaction as far as going into Afghanistan and Iraq following 9-11. The 9-11 Never Forget exhibit also includes a steel beam from the World Trade Center at Ground Zero. This was the presidential decision and uh, to, to go into Iraq and re remove Saddam Hussein from power. Following 9-11, Franks led the attack into Afghanistan and Iraq, a time highlighted through videos and photographs you'll only see here, the actual uniforms worn during that time, and a new traveling exhibit called the Task Force Dagger. It was very important and it was very unique because the generals of the Northern Alliance moved around Northern Afghanistan on horseback. These are artifacts from the removal of Saddam Hussein from power, his uh, son's helmets, his son's Uday and Kuse, uh, a piece from his palace, and also one of the cigars from his uh, private stock that were handmade in Cuba. Then ending with the ballot for Afghanistan's historic election to vote in a new leader. We have Afghanistan and then the, also the ballot from Iraq and then General Franks retired in 2003, and he says, this is as I left it. In the museum, you'll also find the largest collection of challenge coins and one of only two Medal of Honor awards on display in the state. The medal room also shows his other countless awards, including six awards for valor, three Purple Hearts, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. That was um, quite an honor for him. What did that signify? He said that when President Bush hung this medal around his neck, he said one of the highest distinctions of history is to be called a liberator. And he said um, he will always carry that title. General Franks opened this facility not only to tell the history of the military, but to also inspire the next generation of leaders by offering several leadership programs here, along with this mobile classroom. The classroom visits up to 100 different schools each year, presenting Frank's uniform and one-of-a-kind artifacts from his travels abroad. This one is one that the kids love the most. This piece of wood here actually is a wooden pillow. So it was very important to have that available to students and to, and to the public to see it and, and learn about our history because we can't really move forward and be successful in our future unless we have a good solid knowledge of our history. In Hobart, I'm Deanne Stein for Discover Oklahoma.